So hey everybody, I've been doing a series of videos kind of comparing third-party impulse responses to stock cabs in the Helix. I did three videos. Uh, some of the discussion was kind of polarized and I kind of knew it would be, but I had a bunch of requests to do a blind test, kind of saying, let's see if people can tell what they're listening to. And I'm doing this mostly to satisfy my own curiosity on the matter and to see if people can pick out a stock cab versus an IR or even something else. I have a little mystery one I'm gonna throw in there. Before I keep going though, I want to put a clarification out because in the last couple of videos, a lot of people pointed out that I said on a number of occasions that an IR is simply a static equalizer. Now, you know, when I was saying those words, I was using that in a very, very particular context. So a lot of people came back and said, no, an IR is not just a static EQ. And I agree with them 100%, I always have. But in the context of what I was referring to, when we are capturing a guitar speaker cabinet and, and I was very careful to say this in the last video, when it is implemented as it is in the Line 6 Helix, that it basically amounts to or acts as a static equalizer. That's what I was getting at. Never was I intending to suggest that an impulse response and an EQ are the same thing. Otherwise, they wouldn't be called anything different. An impulse response has a time aspect to it as well and works in a very different way beyond even my ability to dive into the very complex math. I wouldn't even try. That's beyond the uh, scope of my pay grade, as we shall say. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I actually came across a really interesting interesting post by uh, somebody on an internet forum and he summed up very well the point that I was trying to get across. He says, in simple words, it is a file referring to an impulse response with some numbers that will be convolved that is somehow multiplied with your music file data. It is an efficient and accurate way to simulate sound signatures that are, and this is an important point, linear. For example, no distortion because it can't be included in this type of data. And it's time constant. That is no modulation, no compression. And the first part of this next sentence is very important. If you mean the IR files to simulate cabinets and mics, which is the context I was using it in, he goes on, it is like an equalizer with many, many bands, 1,000 or even more, so that you can clone the equalization curve of a real cabinet and mic. I think that sums it up really well. And anybody who watched the last video, remember I said it is acting as a very detailed EQ. And I went on to give an example, an audio example of that, where I actually captured the sound of an IR with Isotope's Ozone Match EQ, and I believe and a lot of other folks agreed with me that I pretty successfully was able to match it using a very complex EQ, mind you. That was nothing simple about that EQ. I believe the folks at Isotope say every instance has uh, approximately 8,000 bands it can use to recreate the sound, and I still had to put in multiple instances. So in no way was I suggesting that this was a good way to work or that this is how we should create tones. No, of course, that would be totally ridiculous. As I mentioned in the last video, slap your IR on a work. All I was showing was the power of EQ. And in the grander scheme of things, the conversation was about stock cabs versus impulse response. And if there's any magic kind of fairy dust to, to throwing a third party impulse response in that's going to add something to it. And I feel, in my opinion, no, I don't. It's not something we can't take in a stock cab and EQ to get sounding in the ballpark of our, our favorite IR. And notice I say in the ballpark, probably close enough that it's not really gonna matter in a mix. But again, as I said before, it's really up to each individual to decide their best workflow and what sounds best for them. So I just wanted to clarify that because there was a confusion and some people rightfully you know, commented and said, no, an IR is not a static EQ. And I totally agree. And in every instance I commented back, that yes, I totally agree, but I was talking very, very specifically in context of how it is implemented in the Helix, where the Helix truncates the IR file down to at most approximately 42 milliseconds in a 2048 IR block. Okay, so there's not gonna have this huge amount of room reverb on it like some people have suggested. It's just not possible, it's far too short. So it's basically acting as a static EQ, meaning it's linear, there's no dynamic qualities to it. If we feed more or less signal into it, it's linear. It doesn't affect the sound. It don't get distortion characteristics out of it, et cetera. So that, I just wanted to clarify and I hope that clears things up. 
So back to today's video. I had a bunch of requests to do a blind test video to compare some well-respected impulse responses to some Helix stock cabs. So I did just that. And what I did is I have three manufacturers, highly respected manufacturers of impulse responses that I've purchased their impulse responses. Uh, in the past, I actually wanted to use this as an opportunity to support one of the companies and I purchased some for this video in itself. And they're very nice. I, I First time I've tried those particular ones, I'm not gonna say what they are. Uh, and they're excellent. My hats go off to the companies who are making great impulse responses because they really do work for some to get their workflow going very easily and give them what they want with minimal work and these companies are doing an excellent job so so kudos to all of them but what I'm going to do is play you nine audio files and you might say well why nine that's an odd number literally uh, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two IRs from each manufacturer so that's gonna be six in total I'm going to have two helix stock cabs and I'm going to have one IR in here that I use the same technique as in the last video. It is simply the Helix amp block feeding into a series of these match EQs that I used as I did in the last video to match to an existing IR. Not one of the IRs we hear here. I thought that's not gonna make sense if somebody can't tell the difference. They're gonna know at least which one is the, the uh, match EQ version. So what you're going to hear are nine files. It's the same performance, same DI'd guitar track being fed through the exact same Helix model. I believe I used one of the new Daz Benzene models with all the same settings. And these are volume matched as close as I could get them so that there's no problem with people thinking they're liking one better because it's a little bit louder, which is a very real thing. So I volume matched these. There's no trickery here. There's no post-processing being done to any of these at all. Okay, that's super important. I didn't go through searching for, for versions of uh, which one I thought was best. I literally went through kind of by the description and dragged it over for each of the manufacturers uh, IRs, uh, simply because I wasn't really thinking any particular context. I wanted to give just a bunch of different sounds that are not meant to even be close together and see if anybody could pick out which ones are the IRs and which ones are the stock cabs. So the easiest thing would be to just tell me which ones you think are the stock cabs. Okay, so they're not meant to sound the same. They're all going to sound very different. Volume matched, same performance. I'm trying to keep as few variables in this as possible other than just the different IR because the claim is that so many folks just think that impulse responses are automatically always, again, quote unquote, better than stock cabs. And I'm really curious to see if folks can pick it out. I, some part of me hopes that they can and that'll kind of make a little bit more sense. So this is gonna be fun. A lot of folks have asked for this, so I thought I would do it. So I'm gonna play you the nine files. I, I'm gonna to try to remember to catalog them in the YouTube video so you can click between them quickly and effortlessly. So I guess basically what I wanna know in the comments is if you can pick out which two of them are the stock cabs and also which one is the tone with no IR and just EQ on it. That'll be interesting. It's gonna be really fun. And just, I thought it would be a nice way to kind of close out the series of the previous three videos that I did. So let's go take a listen to those.
All right, what did you think? I would go back and listen a bunch of times. And one thing that I shouldn't have to say, but I think I still do, please, please, please listen on a decent set of studio headphones or studio monitors or a decent set of speakers at least. Try not to do this on your new iPhone or Galaxy Note, whatever. Um, just because a lot of, the only reason I say this is I get a lot of folks who will comment that they said, oh, I listened on the iPhone. I'm sure it's just because they're out and about and they want to hear it. But it's going to be really difficult to tell differences in details between the sounds, uh, you know, on, on those types of uh, playback devices. So anyways, I just thought I would say that. So again, leave in the comments below, which two of the nine do you think are stock cabs and which one do you think is the EQ matched version that doesn't have an IR on it. And also, if anybody wants to, I would also love to see if, I you know it's a bit of a work because there's nine sounds here, but maybe list your order of preference on them. And I also understand this is out of context of any particular song or particular situation where we might be looking for a particular sound, but it's more just a comparison in this context, just hearing the sounds and comparing them to one another. So anyways, this is designed to be fun, guys. I know that this can be such a polarizing thing and I really don't want that. I, I think we just got to, this is more for entertainment purposes to have some fun with it, open up some lines of discussion, but let's always keep it respectful. There's been some weird attacks I've seen because of this and it's, it's, I don't understand it. I, I don't think this is anything to ever get too worked up about or too upset about. So anyways, I just thought I'd put that out there, but thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for taking part in it. Please share it with as many people as you can so that we can get sort of a, a larger sample size of folks that, that uh, sort of answer the, the test question basically or question questions, uh, whatever I post. And uh, I'll come back in a you know, few days or maybe early next week uh, after I have sort of a big enough sample size and I'll do a reveal video to show you what you were actually hearing. So like the video if you don't mind, like I said, share it with anybody who you think would enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, ciao for now.